This lesson is an introduction to colors. Colors in Java are set by creating a color object and then storing the object in the graphics object. Once this is done, everything painted to the window using the graphics object is in the specified color. Java uses a color system on varying the intensity of the three primary colors, red, green, and blue. This is sometimes called the RGB system. Each color is stored as a 24-bit value with each of the primary colors taking 8 bits. With each color value being stored as 8 bits, this means that each primary color can be in the value range 0 to 255. A value of 0 means no color and a value of 255 means the color is at its maximum intensity. The constructor of the color class requires that all three colors be specified. In this example, the color red is created by specifying the red component of the color to be at its maximum and the green and blue components to be completely turned off. The green color object could be constructed the same way with the red and blue turned completely off and the green component being set to its maximum and blue works the same way. You can mix three primary colors to make any color you'd like. Each of the three primary color values can be set between 0 and 255. In this example, red is set to 82, green 167, and blue is 200. The three colors are mixed together at these relative intensities to produce a custom color. Just like any other object, to create a color object, you first need to declare a reference to hold its address which you can do on the same statement you use to create the color, or you can do it ahead of time, like the line of code shown here. You have some choices. There's more than one way to create a color object. To create a new custom color, you can pass it the three RGB values, as we have done in the previous examples. Colors can also be expressed as integer values. In this case, the value is written as a hexadecimal number. In Java, preceding a value with a 0 and an X indicates that the characters following it are hexadecimal digits. This particular technique can be useful for copying color constants from other locations, such as HTML, where the colors are always expressed as hexadecimal constants. The three RGB values can also be expressed as relative intensities in the form of floating point numbers between the range of 0 and 1. The decimal value of 1 is the same as the value of 255 if you are using integer values. Half intensity for a primary color would be 0.5. For convenience, some of the more common color objects already exist and are there for you to use. These predefined colors are all defined inside the color class and are already instantiated as objects and are ready to be stuffed into your graphics object or whatever else you decide to use it for. Here are the names of the predefined colors. There are a total of 12 of them, including black and white, as well as the three primary colors. This may be a good time to mention the fact that not all colors are created equal. Pink on one system will not be the same pink as on another system. In fact, they'll vary quite a bit. Lots of things cause this. The phosphors vary from one screen to the next. The light in the room makes an enormous difference. The colors of the boundaries and other windows on the screen will also cause the human eye to react differently to the colors being shown. And the intensity setting of the primary colors is not linear. That is, red seems to be much brighter than blue if the two are set at the same intensity, and some displays try to compensate for this. The degree of compensation varies, causing more color distortion. The bottom line is this. You should try to select simple colors that don't clash and don't worry too much about subtle shadings. This example displays text and uses a color object to change the default color of the background, then displays three lines of text using three different colors. The constructor makes a call to the set background method of the canvas object to change the default color setting that will be used to clear the window before each call to the paint method. Any color could have been used, but this example uses the predefined color named pink. If you don't specifically set the color of the background, Java will use white, just as it has been doing in the previous examples. The first color that we're going to use for text is red. 
This color could have been produced in any of the ways described earlier, but in this example, the predefined version of the color is used. Since the object has already been created and is ready to use, all we have to do is store it in the graphics object with a call to set color. Once the color has been set, any drawing or painting that you do will be in that color instead of the default black. Here we just draw the line of text. The color for the next line of text is one that we create inside the program. It could be anything, but in this example, the object stored in the MY color reference is actually green. Once the new color object has been stored in the reference, the address of the object is then stored in the graphics object with a call to set color. As you can see from this third example, if you're going to create a color object just for the purpose of storing it in the graphics object, there's no real need to create a reference to it. This call to set color just uses the new command as the argument. This creates a new color object and passes it to the set color method in one command. So now we have a full color window. It may not be very attractive, but that's because I don't have much taste. And besides, this is not a graphics design course. This is a programming course. Notice the background color. I don't know how it looks on your system, but on mine, it sure doesn't look pink. To me, it's more of an orange. But of course, that could be because of the green and blue thrown in with it here and there. Correct color selection is left up to you, and I suggest that you play with the color selections in this example to see what happens when you change color values. A 24-bit color system like the one in Java can produce 16 million colors, but they don't tell you ahead of time that most of them are ugly.